Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. This is section 7.8. We're going to look at factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now in the previous section, we factored uh, these trinomials that had a coefficient of 1. Well, what if that coefficient isn't 1? We're actually going to look at two different methods. Now, the first method, method 1, is what we call trial and error. It's sometimes referred to as reverse FOIL, um, but it's essentially trial and error. So what, to do trial and error, what we have to do is we have to consider all these factors of A, because it's not 1, and all the factors of C. If we recall in the previous section, 7.7, .7, all we had to do was worry about the factors of C. But now we have this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list all the factors of 8 which would be 1 and 2 and 4 and 8. These are all the different factors. And uh, we could consider the negatives as well. But because this is positive, that means these have the same sign. And this is positive, which means everything has the same sign. And they're positive, because we have a positive value there. So I'm just going to worry about the positive values. Then I'm going to list all the factors of 9, which would be 1 and 3 and uh, well, 3 and 9. So I will list all the factors. Now, if we think about when we FOILed, the first term would be one of these two factors multiplied together. And the last term is one of these factors multiplied together. But the middle term is one of these factors from each multiplied together plus a different set of factors from each multiplied together and then summed to get that middle term. So what I have to think about is I have to multiply all of these. And I don't have to worry about repeating factors. So if I do that, I get 1 and 3 and 9 as possible uh, products of their factors. And then I'd have 2 and 6 and 18. And then I'd have. 4 and 12 and 36. And then I'd have 8, and I'll just continue to list over here. And you can see how trial and error can be a little bit on the tedious side, especially as the numbers get larger. But this is just to show all the factors. If you can see the ones right away, it'll quicken this up, so to speak. So we had 8, and then we have 24, and then we have 72. So these are all the different uh, products of the factors of either 8 or 9. Now I just have to say which two of these would combine the 17 if I added them. Well, I could say if I add 1 to any of these numbers, it won't be 17. So this is not one of the factors. If I add 3 to any of these numbers, I will not get 17. So that's out. If I add 9 to any of these numbers, when I get to 8, I realize 9 plus 8 is 17. These are the factors I'm going to use. And then I've got to work it backwards. What did I multiply by 9 to get 9? Well, that would be 1. 1 and 9 are my factors. So if I write this out, because 9 is my last term, 1 and 9 gave me the factor of 9. And what gave me the factors of 8? 1, or excuse me, 1 times 8. So it was 1 times 8. So these, let me get this out of the way, are all the different possibilities. And if you, if you can come across these values sooner, you won't have to list all of them. You won't have to go through it uh, over and over. So now we think about it, well, when we first FOIL, we put an x here and an x here, because x times x is x squared. Well, now it's 1x times 8x would be 8x squared. And then this number, since they're both positive, I'm just going to assess the sign. One of these are positive. This is positive, because they have to be the same sign. And 8 plus 9 is 17x's. 8x and 9x is 17x's. Positive. Everything was positive. So finally, through trial and error, using all the different factors available, we were able to factor it to x plus 1 times the quantity 8x plus 9. And if we want to check our work, we can FOIL it. 
x times 8x is 8x squared. 8x and 9x, my outer and inner term, is 17x. And then 1 times 9 is 9. So if I FOIL it out, take the time to actually show that work, I'll get that value back. Now, <clears throat> let's look at this one. And I'm going to do this one a little bit quicker, because I'm not going to do all the factors. If I think of all the factors of 21, there's only four, 1, 3, 7, and 21. All the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. They have to have a difference of 41. Well, if we think about this for a moment, if we assess the sign, this is negative, and this is positive, which means both factors here have to be negative. So I'm just going to say, OK, I have a y term times a y term to get that y squared. And then we'll have to figure out what these coefficients are. And then whatever this term is, because it's positive and it sums to a negative, both have to be negative. Because a negative times a negative is positive. But if I sum two negatives together, I get negative. Now I can just look at this and say, well, what two of these factors multiplied together and then added is going to give me negative 41. And I know 3 times 2 is 6. And 7 times 5 is 35. 35 and 6 is uh, 41. So where do these go? Well, my x, or excuse me, my y values, the a term, was from 3 and 7. These two values multiplied together, 3 and 7. And my constant was from 2 and 5. And the 7 times the 5, well, that has to be oh, in the opposite parentheses in order to multiply them. 5 times 7 is how I got that 35. Right? If they're in the same set of parentheses, you're not multiplying them. And so 3 and 2, the 3's here, the 2's over there. We'll notice they're on either side of here, so we put them on either side. All right, so I can check my work by multiplying this out. 3y times 7y is 21y squared. Uh, 3y times negative 2 is negative 6y. Negative 5 and 7y is negative 35y. 35 and 6 would be negative 41y's. And negative 5 times negative 2 is 10. So we could use FOIL to figure out that, yep, this is factored correctly. Now, hopefully, you know, trial and error, it does work. But there's a second method. And I personally prefer the second method. I think it's uh, a little bit quicker of a method. It's called the AC method. And sometimes it's called the AC method factor by grouping. In the last uh, section, 7.7, .7, we learned how to factor by grouping. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take A times C. If we recall our trinomial, we have the coefficients A, B, and C. Well, A times C, the AC method says take A and multiply it by C. Well, A times C, in this case, A is 2 and C is 5, gives me 10. 2 times 5 is 10. Now all I have to do is say, what are the factors of 10 that sum to 7? Very similar to when, we, when this coefficient was 1. We just had to look at this number, which was a single number, and say, what are the factors of that single number that sum to the middle term? That's all we have to do now that we multiplied A times C. What are the factors of 10 that sum to 7? Well, I know 2 times 5 is 10. 2 plus 5 is 7. So now I'm ready to do something with this. And the reason why I said it's also called the AC method factor by grouping is because after we find AC, we use these values to factor this by grouping. Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this middle term and break it into two terms. Well, what two terms do I break it into? These right here, the factors that I found here. 2x squared plus 2x's and 5x's plus 5, my c value. Now, if we think about what I did here, I just split up the middle term. And if we, we add these together, 5x and 2x is still 7x. So I didn't change its value. I just wrote it as a four-term polynomial. Now I can factor by grouping. The first two terms have a 2 and an x in common. It's greatest common factor. If I factor that out, I get an x and a 1. 
Here, I can say, well, they both have a 5 in common. So I can factor out a positive 5. And that would leave me with an x. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. And now we see these two values are the same. x plus 1 is multiplied by both factors, 2x and 5. I'm losing my chalk. All right. So x plus 1 times the quantity 2x plus 5. And if I FOIL this out, I get 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x and 5x is 7x. And 1 times 5 is 5. So it FOILs back out to what I originally started with. So I know that I factored this into its binomials correctly. Let's do another example. <clears throat> what if we have 6 times 5? Well, AC, 6 times 5, would give me a positive 30. What are the factors of 30 that have a difference of 31 that would sum or combine to 31? Well, if this is positive, if these values are positive, and this value is negative, when I find their factors, that means that they both need to be negative. A negative times a negative is positive. Combining negatives gives you more negative. Well, <clears throat> to find the factors of 31 that combine, uh, or excuse me, the factors of 30 that combine to 31, well, I'll start here. 1 and 30. Well, 1 and 30 is 31. But they each have to be negative. A negative times a negative is a positive value. I found those factors already. I didn't have to list all of them and go through it. I just had to list until I got the ones I was looking for. So I'm going to use this to split up the middle term. So I'm going to say 6x squared minus 1x, and we don't need that 1 in there, minus 30x plus 5. Now we can factor by grouping. These each have an x in common, and that's going to leave me with 6x minus, divide out that, I get a 1. Here, I have negative 30x plus 5. But if I look at this, if it does factor, I want this term to be positive. Well, right now, the term containing an x is negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative value and its common factor. So I say, well, 30 and 5 have a common factor of 5. So I'm going to factor out a negative 5. Well, when we factor out a negative, it just changes the sign. So this would be a positive. 6x, and this would be a negative 5 over negative 5 is negative 1. And now we can see, sure enough, it is common. So we can factor it out. 6x minus 1 times both the factors x and negative 5, x and negative 5. It's now factored. And that's called the AC method. So let's go back to this problem right here. This was the very first problem we did. And what I want you to do, instead of using trial and error, attempt the AC method to find the factors of this. You already know the answer, but apply the AC method to this. Try it on your own. Make sure you FOIL it to get back to this just to check your work. So this has been section 7.8. Thank you for watching.